Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So in this section, we're going to take a look at setting up Spring Boot properties and unit tests. Now, I want to point out there's actually a number of different ways to do this, and the Spring Boot community is evolving how they're managing properties and, and test files. Spring Boot 1.4 does have, offer some changes. That is, at the time of recording this, 1.4 is not out. We're still on the 1.3 series, but the 1.4 branch is going to offer some exciting capabilities around testing. And that's not going to be included in that because that's not ready out to come out of the oven. At some point in the future, when 1.4 is released, I will update this course with that. But I want you to understand there are a number of different ways to work with Spring Boot and the application properties that we're going to be injecting into it. And I have an example set up here. This is just one way of doing it. There's actually several ways of do doing this, but I'm going to show you one specific way to bring in the properties. And Let's go over to IntelliJ now, and I'm going to show you my implementation of working with properties under Spring Boot. Okay, now I'm over here in IntelliJ now, and I brought up the application.properties file. This is a standard Spring Boot file, and it is under the resources folder. And in it, we can add our own custom properties. I'm adding in the same properties that we've been working along with for a little fake JMS server. So I have the server port, user, and password there. And now we'll be sourcing in this properties file. It works like other properties files, but in this case, when you're running a Spring Boot application at runtime, by default, Spring Boot is going to pick up application.property, so you don't have to explicitly tell the Spring context to bring in this file. And this is a, a Spring Boot behavior. It is not a default Spring behavior. If you're working with just Spring, you're going to have to explicitly tell Spring what property files you want to load, but Spring Boot is going to automatically load application properties. With that being said, I, I do have my uh, configuration class and we're using the value annotations. And I did say that Spring Boot is gonna bring it in automatically, except when you're running a test, a unit test, or an integration test in this case. And in, in this case, I've got some new annotations here. I have a Spring application configuration. I'm bringing in the same Spring Boot configuration class and I'm telling it that it's a web integration test, but I have to explicitly tell it to bring in that application.properties file. And that's an exception under Spring Boot, is when you're working with Spring Boot and properties files, you have to tell Spring Boot what property files to use. Now, at runtime, if it is running at runtime under a web application container like Tomcat, it'd be done automatically. But since we're using JUnit for testing here, I have to explicitly call that out. I'm going to right click and run this and we can see that the Spring Boot is going to bring up the whole application context and this is actually bringing up Tomcat, starting up Tomcat in an embedded mode, hibernate and our database is getting built and all that and our, our test does run happily and we can see that even ActiveMQ was brought up in this example and it, it, this is a long running test but it is testing how the properties got set. Now you can see here that that was a pretty heavy test to run. It took a lot of time for the whole spring context to spool up and do what it needed. So this is not a typical unit test or even an integration test. You wanna make your test a little bit lighter than this. This is a fairly heavy weight test, but I, I set it up just so you can see how to wire in that, the properties file within a spring boot integration test context. Now. When you're doing testing, you're probably going to want the majority of your tests to be unit tests, which are going to be small, fast, and lightweight. And even in a larger context like this, the integration test, you'll probably want to set up a special configuration that's going to be a little bit lighter. And this example, not the best example because we are bringing in a lot of stuff, but I haven't shown you the tools to work with configuring that for, for our needs and our purposes. And that, that's what we're going to be working with in future in this class. So I do want to take a, a side note here saying this is not the way you really want to be doing integration tests. You want to make them a little bit lighter, but that's where we're at in the course right now. I wanted you to understand how Spring Boot treats the application.properties file differently under test than it does at runtime. So there's a little bit of a difference there. You have to explicitly call out that application properties file using that annotation I showed you to get that injected into the context. And then as an integration test, it'll load and, and function normally. But in this example, we are bringing up everything, which makes the test very heavy and slow.